Come learn Excel with me. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl V Queen here again, and I'm back with another series. Yes, it's the Excel series. This video has been requested by many persons, and I'm finally putting it out there. In this series, I will be teaching you the basics about the Excel interface, which I'll be teaching in this first video. I'll be teaching you about sorting the data, formatting the data, different formulas, functions, comments, a lot of different stuff. But first, before we get into it, I need to ask you guys, please like like the video and share it to others so that other people can benefit from the videos as well and subscribe if you're new and you can also comment down below to encourage me and if you need any help if you have any questions but let's get right into it okay so first things first we need to open excel so go to your start menu start window search window search box edit blank then start typing excel e excel app Press right to switch preview. And press enter. Excel. New grouping. New grouping. Featured list. Blank workbook blank workbook alt. F. L. Then press enter here. Sheet 1 table. A 1. So basically Excel is where you have a workbook in which you can have different worksheets on the workbook. So it's like a book but you have different pages on it which would be the different sheets. Now the way how the Excel window is set up is that basically where I'm at right now where here it says A1, I am in what you call a grid. So it's like multiple rows and multiple columns and where each row and column meet it creates what we call a cell. So we're in a grid right now. All the columns are named from A to Z and all the rows are named by numbers. So one, two, three and going on. So right now it says A1 because I'm currently in the first column and the first row. Also, if I should press F6 right now, which will jump to the different sections in this Excel window, you will hear. Pane. Status bar, status bar. Normal toggle button pressed. See your document in normal view. This is the status bar. Now this is a little narrow bar that runs along the bottom of your Excel window. And if I should press F6 again. Pane. Ribbon tabs tab control expanded. Home tab selected alt. H2 of 9. And that is your menu ribbon. Also a shortcut key once you are selected on the grid section of the Excel window. To get to the menu ribbons you can always just use your alt key. But let me press F6 again to get back to the grid. Sheet 1 table, a 1. Alright, so the menu ribbon runs along the top of the Excel window, so the grid takes up the majority of the screen. Now, first, some basic navigation keys. You can use your arrow keys to navigate to the different cells in the Excel interface. So if I use my right arrow right now, I will go over into the next column. B1. There you go. If I use down arrow, I'll go down into the next row. B2. If I use my left arrow, I will go back over to the next column. A two. And if I use my up arrow, I'll go back up into the first row. A one. And there we go. Also, your tab key brings you across each column in the same row. So if I press tab. B1. Then. C1. Then. D1. There we go. Also, your enter key will bring you down by row. So. A two. A three. A four. Awesome. Now, let me go back up to the first cell. A1. In Excel, once you're selected on an empty cell and you want to put information into this cell, you just start typing. So I can type right now, name. Edit N. A. M. E. And if I do right arrow. B1. Come back over with left arrow. Name A1. You realize it says name. There's one thing you should note though. In Excel, you see once you go on a cell which already has something in it and you want to edit what is in that cell, don't just go and start typing because once you start typing it will completely replace all that you've already had in that cell. The key to use to be able to edit what you have in a currently selected cell is the F2 key. So, edit name. Now once you press F2, it will bring you to the end of any text which is in that cell. So you can use your home key to go to the start of that text. N. And say I want to type first name, so I'll type first. F-I-R-S-T space. Then I can press enter. A two. And you realize it shifts me down into the next row, but if I should up arrow you will hear. First name A1. There we go. Now also some selecting keystrokes. If you use your shift plus your right arrow, you will select 
by column. So a one name through B one selected row one column one. Ah, so it says A one through B one selected. So it selects cell A one, which is in row one and column A, and cell B one, which is also in row one and column B. Let me come out of this selection. Name A one. Now, if you use your shift plus your down arrow, it will select by row. So let me do that. A one name through A two selected row one through two column one. There we go. So you know if that means right now I have in column A row one and row two selected. What if I also want to select the parallel rows in column B? I can just use my shift and right arrow. A one name through B two selected row one through two column one. And there we go. Name A one. Also, I don't have any data in this table really right now. But if you use your Control plus Shift plus right arrow, it will select all the data that you have entered in that row. But note this: if you have a cell that is empty in that row that you want to select in between the data, say for instance, we're in row one. You have name in column A and grade in column B. You left column C empty, and then you have a pass mark in column D. It will only select column A and column B in that row because you have an empty space there. It will not select the rest of what is in that row. You would have to press the Control plus Shift plus either right or left arrow keystroke again. Also, the keystroke to select a column, which will select all the cells with the data that you have entered in that column, is Control plus Shift plus down arrow or up arrow. And the same thing with the blank cell applies with this keystroke as well. Now, I want to get into a little practice exercise with you guys. But before I close this sheet that I have here. To save your Excel workbook, you can use the Control plus S keystroke, which will open up the Save dialog, or you can press F12, which will bring you straight to the Save As dialog. Also, if you want to create a brand new workbook, the keystroke is Control plus N. If you want to open an existing workbook, the keystroke is Control plus O. And if you want to switch between open workbooks, the keystroke is Control plus Tab. And if you want to just close the whole Excel interface, the keystroke is Alt plus F4. But if you just want to close a single workbook, the keystroke is Control plus F4. Now let's get right into that exercise. Okay, so the practice exercise. Um, pretend I'm a teacher and I want to record something with the name of my students. Um, their grade that they got in the first two semesters. I want to calculate their final average for the year, and I also want to determine their status, whether they passed or failed. So let me let you hear what I have in my first cell. I have name of student crop day one. Then let me right arrow semester one crop B one. Semester two cropped C one, final average cropped D one, status E one, F one. And you realize that some of them says cropped. When something says cropped in Excel, that means whatever text you have in the cell, it's cut off. So for persons who are seeing, it's cut off, so they are not seeing all the text that is in there. That means that you need to widen the cell a bit more. So we'll be doing that a little later on. But let me just show you some of what else I have in here. First, let me show you two keystrokes. To get to the first cell in your Excel document, all you have to do is press Control plus Home. Name of student crop day one. And to get into the last cell in the range in which you have data entered in the Excel document, you will press Control plus End. E11. You realize it says E11. This is because if I should go up to the very first row of this column, that is where I had status. So this is the status column where we're going to enter if they pass or fail. So because I have something in that column, it registers it as a part of where data is entered. So let me do Control plus Home to go back to the first cell again. Name of student crop day one. So below this, I have the name of ten different students, and under semester one and semester two, I have their grades, which is the percentages of that semester. Now I want to add a heading for this worksheet. So I'm at the first cell, and I want to insert a row above this cell to be able to add in that heading. So once you're in the row below where you want to insert another row, you go into that cell, then. You press the applications key. Cut, remove the selection, and put it on the clipboard so you can paste it somewhere else. Then you'll down arrow until you hear insert. Copy, paste, smart, translate, insert, insert cells left paren. K 
Control plus shift plus equals right paren, I. Then you press enter. Insert dialog insert. Shift cells down radio button checked alt plus D. And I'll let you hear all the options in this selection. So what this will do is shift down all the data that is in this column that I'm currently selected in by one cell. So where I have name of student now in A1, that will now become a blank cell and name of student along with the rest of the cells below it will be shift down. Now down arrow. Entire row radio button checked alt plus R. So this is where we'll insert an entire row above the row in which you're currently on. Entire column radio button checked alt plus C. And I think this one inserts an entire column. I think it's to the left of the column that you're currently selected on. Shift cells right radio button checked alt plus I. Now this will shift all the cells in the row that you're currently in to the right. So the A1 will become blank and the name of student along with the rest of the column headers that I have in this row will be shift over. So name of student will then be in B1 and the rest of the information will follow. Down arrow again. Shift cells down radio button checked alt plus D. Now we're back to the top. Now let's go to the entire row option that I wanted. Entire row radio button checked alt plus R. Then press enter. Excel practice exercise dash Excel. Sheet 1 table. A1. Now, you realize it says A1 because it's blank. And if I shoot down arrow? Name of student cropped A2. Ah, there we go. So let me go back up to A1. A1. Now remember that it's a heading for my table. So I want it to just be one thing over the table. I don't want it to be split up into different cells. So what I'm going to have to do is merge and center the cells over this table, which are in this row. So what I'm going to have to do is to merge and center these cells. So remember the keystrokes that I taught you to select. I'm going to use my shift and right arrow to go right over until I reach to the column E, which I know was the last column which had in my status. A1 through B1, A1 through C1, A1 through D1, A1 through E1, selected row 1 column 1. And then I'll use the keystroke Alt plus H and then M to merge D cells. So Alt plus H together and then M by itself. Ribbon. M. Merge and center not checked combine and center the contents of the selected cells in a new larger cell. This is a great way to create a label that spans multiple columns. Alt, H, M, C. Then press enter. Sheet 1 table. A1 through E1. I know you realize it says A1 through E1 because all of them have been merged into one cell. And like how it says merge and center, that means any text that you enter into this cell now will be automatically centered. So let me call this end of year results. Cap E N D space cap O F space cap Y E A R space cap R E F E L T S. Then let me down arrow. Name of student cropped A2. And let me up arrow back to let you hear what it says. End of year results A1 through E1. And there we go. Now, a very important thing that you need to know once using Excel with NVDA. Once you go down into the data, let me show you. Name of student cr mark 53B5. You realize it just says 53B5. You don't know what is the name of the student and you don't know which column you're under, whether it's semester one or semester two. You don't know which column you're in. There is a keystroke in NVDA which will announce to you once you switch from column to column, we will announce to you the column that you're currently in. And once you switch from rows to rows, it will announce to you the row that you're currently in. So the keystroke to set your column headers is insert plus shift plus C. But before you do this keystroke, you have to make sure that you're currently in the cell which contains the first column header. So let me make sure I'm in that cell. 82B6, 6, 35, semester 1, name of, name of student crop day 2. Okay, so I am in the cell which contains my first column header. No, I'll use the keystroke insert plus shift plus C. Set A2 as start of column headers. There we go. And once you hear that, that means the start of the column headers are set right there. I want to also set my row headers, the names of the students, so that once I go through each grade, I can tell which student the grade is for. So what I need to do is to go into the cell which contains the first name of the list of the names of students. So I will go down. Mark James cropped a three. And that is the first name in the list of the name of students. So right here, I would use insert plus shift 
plus R, which sets the row headers. Set A3 as start of row headers. So, to sum up, the row headers are when you have the headers in the rows, and the column headers are when you have the headers in the columns. So if I should write arrow now, which would be shifting into a different column, you would hear 35B3 semester 1. You realize it announces to you semester 1. And if I should write arrow again? 76C3 semester 2. So it still tells you the column and the row, which is C3, and it announces to you the column header. But what if I should go into a different row? What would it say? 66C4 Kelsey Stewart. You realize it tells me the name of the student, and if I should down arrow again? 79C5 Emily Armstrong. Yes, awesome. Now on to the next keystroke. Remember that I was telling you that a lot of the information was saying cropped, and I don't want it to be saying cropped. What I'm going to do now is to widen the columns. So let me go to the name of student column. End of year results A1 through E1. Name of student cropped A2. Let me go down to the first name actually because I want to do something else with the column headers. Mark James cropped A3. So there's a keystroke in Microsoft Excel which allows you to auto fit the cells. So in this column that you're currently selected on, from this cell downwards, the longest amount of text that is in that column, that will be the size that the cell will auto fit to. First, what we have to do is to select the entire column. So I'm at the start of the names. Now let me use the keystroke control plus shift plus down arrow. A three mark James through a 12. Alicia Fraser selected row three through 12 column one. Then I'll use the keystroke alt plus H then O then I to auto fit. Sheet one table. A three mark James through a 12. Alicia Fraser selected row three through 12. Kelsey Stewart a four. Mark James a three. And now if I should down arrow you realize that it's no longer saying cropped. Kelsey Stewart a four. Emily Armstrong A5, Eric Jr. A6. And there we go. So now I'm going to go over to the column headers. End of year results A1 through E1. Name of student A2. Semester 1 cropped B2. Okay, so you see this is cropped as well. And what I'm going to be doing here, instead of auto-fitting these, because the column headers are the only things that are cropped in these columns in the semester one and semester two columns because the numbers are short so what i'm going to be doing is wrapping the text so i'm going to select them both b2 semester one through c2 semester two selected row two column two then i'll do the keystroke alt plus h then w sheet one table b2 semester one through c2 semester two selected row two column two all right let me use my left arrow and then my right arrow to let you hear what it says name of student it Semester 1 B2. Ah, you realize it no longer says cropped. Semester 2 C2. And there we go. Final average cropped D2. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to wrap this one as well. So let me use the same keystroke. Alt plus H then W. Sheet 1 table. Final average D2. And there we go. And that's it. But there's one more keystroke I forgot to tell you. If you don't want to auto fit the column width, you can also manually change the column width. What you'll have to do is use the keystroke Alt plus O, then C, then W, then a dialog box will come up in which you would enter the number in which you want to change the column width to. And then you'll enter out of that dialog box and your column width should be changed. But that's it for this video guys. This video was just a basic introduction to Excel for all of you that are new to the Excel interface. Stay tuned for the next video in which I'll be doing some different formulas and I'll be sorting the data in the table. But this video was a great one and I hope this video was helpful to you. Be sure to like the video, subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you're new. Remember, if you like the video, it will be shared to others who can benefit from it. I remember to share it to your friends as well. I'm looking forward to making the next video for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to comment below if you have any questions, any queries, or you just want to encourage me. I'll see you later.